basically the the thing I was thinking about what we could uh, do is before we get into it look a little bit uh, at the basics and look at the OpenGL shader pipeline so if, if you go to OpenGL pipeline there's a good um, image for that so you know uh, as you know or maybe you don't but um, uh, Shaders um, in Spark is something that was exposed to uh, patches quite recently, a few few months ago or whatever. And this is something I really um, looked into uh, quite thoroughly because I enjoyed it a lot. So this is what, what I do coming from a design background, from an animation background. Um, so um, basically what you can do is like do crazy shit like glass, as you can see here in the um, donut floating around. And uh, now, how does that work? Okay, so um, let's see if we find a good image for that. Yeah, so that's a good image, I think. I'm just gonna pop an overview. Okay, look at that. Uh, make it a little bit bigger, so you guys can see. Okay, so 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 what's what's happening? So essentially, uh, usually if you have, um, I'm just gonna get rid of the donut again from my face. Uh, so um, what's happening if you have anything drawn on the screen just as the pixels you're seeing right now traditionally you know what happened is that the CPU the processing uh, unit of the computer pushed the pixels to uh, the graphics card and the graphics card was just basically a dump uh, frame buffer that was just displaying the pixels and not doing uh, much more than that and then um, I guess in the late 90s I was it was uh, um, you had graphics cards, GPU, graphics processing units, which became uh, more capable. And this is what, what we're looking at now. So every computer has a CPU that does a lot of math and whatever else that's going on. And, and you have a GPU, and this is what's basically rendering all this stuff. And um, more and more things are being offloaded to the GPU. So it started with just being able to render uh, polygons on the screen. And now we can do um, general processing stuff like rendering. If you look at render engines like Redshift that runs on the GPU or Octane, if you look at you know, linear offline rendering. And um, hey, and I pride. And um, uh, and that's what's happening now. And then uh, OpenGL is one of the frameworks that basically facilitates um, the tools or like the programs. Hey, dude, um, welcome, dude, SG. So um, that facilitates uh, the programs to basically draw pixels on the screen and draw 3D objects on the screen. All right. So um, hey, Beth Wickerson. So uh, basically, how does it work? Well, suppose you have an object like our donut that you want to draw it on the screen. <coughs> um, how it works that is that you have uh, what's called shaders, which are basically little programs that run on the GPU, on the graphics processing unit, that basically um, prepare the data to get displayed on the screen. And um, just very broadly, you have a vertex shader and a pixel shader or fragment shader, that's the same thing. Pixel shader, fragment shader, same thing. And both use um, different, let's say, programming languages that are uh, inherent to the framework that's used. So OpenGL has a GLSL, and uh, DirectX, which is a Microsoft programming environment, um, has um, what's called HLSL or something, high-level shader language, I think. And uh, what Spark did is that, I think internally, they are probably using GLSL or something like that but um, they did uh, implement it in patches first and then now it's also accessible uh, via the scripting but again like i'm using mostly patches because i'm a visual guy and so it's easier for me to use patches rather than scripting and um, the other benefit as i understand of spark so like facebook implementing it as a patches uh, based um, approach is that they can optimize internally a little bit better for um, new uh, uh, framework. So let's say Apple pushes out, uh, what was it, a Metal framework in, in, instead of OpenGL or, or Vulkan on AMD, they can implement that in Spark on a lower level without the user having to learn any new thing and they can optimize stuff and so on. Okay, so that was a bit of uh, history and you know, you are um, more than welcome to read up on that if you're interested. I'm just gonna post this uh, link here in the chat if you want to check it out. 
And essentially what was possible to do in uh, Spark is to access the fragment shader. And uh, that is basically the part of the shader program that draws the pixels and looks at, you know, a lighting, like what, oh man, this is not entirely true, like looks at the texture, what, what texture do we need? But we were not able to access the vertex shader, so to change the position of vertices. All right, so let's let's go into Spark and explain that. So <coughs> let's make a new file and uh, and look into that. I'm gonna close the other one. Okay, so now, you know, that's this. And now I'm just gonna first put myself back onto webcam. There you go. Okay, so so let's take it step by step and uh, don't cuff. Well, you know, it's it's the row now. What can I do? No, I'm kidding. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Hey, David. Ooh, how are you? Hey, what's up? Hey, Ben Wickerson. Welcome, everyone. So I'm just gonna... It's not asthma, no. <coughs> it might be, actually. I have allergy. Uh, hey, lots of, lots of time. Um, so maybe, maybe it is. Hey, Julian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Do you think, what's, it, what's this guy? Is this Elon Musk? It looks like Elon Musk. Hey, Youngway, thanks for the follow. Uh, so, uh, uh, what, where were I? Uh, yeah, so let's start and just doing a, 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 a just a simple uh, spark shader thing, right? Hey, Blanco. Hey, Christoph, na? Alles fresh? <laughs> um, Alright, uh, okay, so let's let's start doing the doing a simple shader, basically. I'm just gonna add a um, arm start, yo. I'm just gonna add a, um, a plane. So that's that, and that doesn't have any material uh, applied yet. So let's go to material and change it to flat. And what flat means, uh, re uh, compared with all the other stuff, is that it's basically not taking into account any of the um, uh, light information. So it, it's always going to display the same pixel. It doesn't matter which uh, light is uh, on or not. So like if I change, if I if I, if, I, if I switch off those lights here. Nothing's gonna happen. All right, so let's just um, load any um, texture. I don't want you guys to see the my uh, hard drive. Ah! <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna load some random texture. All right, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Good. That's this one. I use this one. Why not, right? And now, of course, as you know, I can just go to texture and put the texture. Uh, well, that's new texture. Oh, that's weird. Oh, now you see. Oh, uh, what's now? What new project is happening? JPEG. I should be able to just put it in here. Anyway, who cares? If I press this button, it's gonna show up in the uh, patches thing. And now I guess you could just have to let me know whether um, you can read the um, labels here on the on the patches or not. Um, Hey, Omi, how's it going? Robots, robots, robots. Okay, I'm just gonna do some sound effects. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. yeah, actually, this one, this one, I save for if if an example works. So that's very much premature. Yeah. So it's uh, this is not uh, this is not. Stop. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna go back. Nine, nine, nine. Stop. <coughs> All right. So um, I should be able to drag this uh, material in and just connect it, and it should show up. And it does. Very nice. So okay. So one thing you're noticing is obviously the aspect ratio is, is is not correct, meaning that it's squashed. Which the reason is that if you look at the uh, texture here, <coughs> the original texture is um, actually obviously not square, and you know. The square is square. Uh, anyway, so now, okay, so we have a texture on a plane. How, why do we care? So what, what we can do now is actually use the texture sampler um, and look at the vertex attribute of texture coordinates, put that into UV, which is UV is the, is the axis of the texture coordinates. 
And then if you put the RGB thing back in here, and then we go back off here, oh, we have the same thing. Oh, so yeah, so who cares? Well, the cool thing now is what we can do is we can manipulate the UVs. And that is basically how all the shade effects in Spark work, more or less. Like if you look at all the um, stuff, uh, what I'm doing like on my Gumroad, and actually if you go to Twitch, I put the link for the Gumroad for the... Um, uh, uh, shaders I'm doing and, and, and you can check it out and, and check them out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can do that. So everything revolves more or less around um, uh, uh, manipulating the UV. So so what does that mean? Okay, so here uh, the UVs uh, come out and show the texture here, which position on the plane they should be. So if we just manipulate them. We can do a little add, right? And then nothing happens. And if I put one, the texture disappeared. If I put point one, it's shifted a little bit. And this, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm adding this value to the UV, so I'm changing the position. Okay, so here's one trick I'm doing a lot is uh, if I want to just play with chat and I'm too lazy to enter numbers and I don't even know what scale those numbers have, uh, what I do is I just use the screen uh, pan feature. And if I'm just gonna put the position in here and then I can just move around with my mouse and oh no, nothing happens. Well, because the values coming out here are crazy high, right? Because they are the screen coordinates. But so what I do is I just drag the device thing in here and then I just divide the position by the screen size and that's called why use vertex average over texture transform? Well, uh, I mean, good question. We're going to get there. If you just want to move the texture, obviously you can use the texture transform, but I'm going to show you in a second what you can do with the shader, say, shader stuff. Um, okay, so I just normalized the um, position of my uh, mouse cursor, which means now if I, if I press here, it's going to be zero, and if I press here, it's going to be one. I'm going to show you. All right. And uh, so now I can just move it around. All right, cool. Cool beans. Well, how do, why do we care? Okay, so now the cool thing we can do is we can use now the value of a different texture to, um, uh, to uh, manipulate the UVs of another texture, so to speak. So basically we can displace it. And that's what we're doing, right? Displacing textures and in a second we can displace vertices as well. So if I use just a camera texture and use the um, camera um, texture here, right? And I'm just gonna plug it in. So it's just my own ugly, boring self again. Hey, don't you know? Thanks for the follow. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna put on some music. It's much nicer with the music. The thing is like so much going on with the chat and everything, can't concentrate a little bit. I have to get used to that. Maybe music is All right, so now on the plane, on our plane, we just have the camera texture. And now the cool thing is that we can use the values of the camera texture to displace the uh, UVs of our other texture. So if I put that guy in here, and then I'm just gonna put the I'm just gonna close this camera texture in here, we're seeing, oh, boom, it doesn't work. Uh, hi, Jace, thanks for the follow. It doesn't work. Well, why doesn't it work? Um, okay, so um, we don't know, but we can ask uh, the tool to tell us. So if, if we press this uh, little button here, it says patch. Can you read that? It says patch is not defined for the provided input types, vector two, vector four. So basically what it's saying that from the vertex attribute, we get uh, the type vector two, because it has two coordinates, u and v. And we just get that out. And because then you can see me, it's like U and V, or the other way around, I forgot. Um, and the um, texture from the camera obviously gives us a four, um, it's like a vector four, it's like RGB and alpha. Alpha is always one for the camera, but, so we can use uh, the unpack node, for example, and the pack node um, to get it to there, but what I always love to use is a swizzle node. This is a really like super useful, super useful thing. So then we can just say, hey, give us the R channel of the camera image and displace our uh, coordinates. It's not working again. What well, shit. 
Switzerland over unpack. Yeah, definitely. It depends on what you want to use it for, but <coughs> generally speaking, yes, Swizzle is fucking amazing. You can do so much good shit with it. Okay, so why is it not working? So let's see, what, is, what does it want? Patch is not defined for the provided. Input types, texture 4 channel, texture 2 channel. Uh, anyway, the problem is that we need to also sample the camera texture to be able to use the UVs. As far as I found out, I mean, maybe there's a simpler way. But so basically what we're doing is we're going to loop over the UVs of the camera texture, sample that, use two uh, mm, uh, what channels of that and displace the UVs. And now it's working. So now what you're seeing is... Oh, okay, now it's like... Uh, what is that? <laughs> no, what was the other one? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Um, now, it's a little bit much. It's a little bit much, right? So it's like all crazy, you can't see anything. But, um, uh, you know, I'm just gonna scale that in place a little bit. But what you can do is you can just... Um, <coughs> hey, Knuckle Search. Thanks for the follow. Hey, Young Ray also. Thanks for the follow. Drive, Hiplani, and everyone. Thanks for the follow. So now what you can do is you can just tone down that... Hey, Andreas. Hi. Welcome to Discord. Uh, so you can again tone down that by just uh, saying multiply, right? And then if you have multiply one, it's basically the same value. It doesn't do anything. If I put multiply zero, it's not, it doesn't like it, I don't know, but it's still working. And if I put point one, see, oh no, it looks nice. See, hey Omi, and this is also why for this uh, example, um, Texture transform wasn't what we wanted to do, but we wanted to actually, you know, offset, just place one texture with another texture. And we can swap it around easily now, right? So we can just displace any texture with any texture at that point. So we can just use the camera texture, right? So that's myself again. That's actually cool. This is the camera texture displaced with the camera texture. It's kind of cool too. But we can displace it also now with our texture we, we loaded. And hey, actually, by the way, so now the plane is a 3D plane, right? So I can just, um, you know, rotate it and whatever. But if you do those uh, screen space uh, effects, usually what you would use is not a 3D plane, but a 2D plane. And that you you add that by doing 2D objects, rectangle, then you can put the material, the whole material, so that's what it is. And now if you want to scale it to the whole screen of your phone, you go to size, click once, say fill width, click twice, fill height, and now that's what we're talking about. So now I'm displacing the camera texture and I'm uh, using the imported texture. So, um, XY. Yeah, 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 XYZ. Jives is asking what's inside Swizzle. Okay, so Swizzle, let's talk, let's talk about Swizzle a little bit, right? Because Swizzle is fucking amazing. So let's assume you have a value and that's <laughs> that's text knocked along. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And this is why, yeah, no, but okay, let's switch it around and let's just use the camera texture itself to displace the camera texture, which is kind of cool also, right? And now what we can also do is, because we have the multiply thing, we can do, uh, and, oh, this is actually a great example for a swizzle also, right? So now if, if I, okay, so what, all right, let's see. So out of the texture sampler, this color here, right? The color value is actually four channels, right? It has the RGB and alpha channel. But again, the, um, where is it? Texture coordinates is just two channels. You just have the horizontal and the vertical channel and it's called U and V. And now you have to basically decide which channels of the texture you use to displace the um, U and V coordinates. So again, what you could do is use unpack and pack. And I think that's a good way to understand what's going on. So if I go unpack, and it's actually four channels, so I have to put vector four. It gives me the RGBA in this case, because it's a texture, or XYZW if it's a vector. And now I can just use 
again pack two channels which correspond to u and v in our case and then just use basically the r channel of our texture to displace the x and y right so th those two nodes do exactly the same thing as this swizzle rr so in swizzle you can put um either zero which means zero you can put one which displaces the texture well actually now we scale it down with a multiply node but actually if we bypass that it's displacing the texture so much that it's completely off the uh screen so because uvs all, always go from zero to one so if you uh, you know move the texture in uv space the unit one then it's just moving out away uh, and um, or we can put zero when it's nothing is happening, or we can take any channel of the input node to basically map it to any channel of the output node. So if we put RR, then we're mapping the red channel of the camera image <coughs> to the to both of the output channels, and then we just again multiplying it. And now another cool thing again, if we just take our little you know little thing here from before where we have the normalized uh, pan thing and put it in our, our multiplier, I can just adjust by just moving around the curve, adjust the amount of displacement. All right, all right, yeah, so this was, uh, this was the uh, <laughs> vertex displacement, uh, no, no, not yet, it was the pixel displacement.